the Maasai Mara game reserve can only be sustainable for future generations if the communities around are comfortable, are enjoying the benefits and are seeing the game reserve as something which benefits them directly. The best game reserve, not only in Africa, but in the world. I'm very excited that today we are back. We are having him as, a, as an investor in this great location. And, and I believe that uh, these, uh, the plans he has for this area, I've seen the plans, the, the camp he wants to build, the lodge camp, uh, which he's going to put here, uh, going by the plans which I've seen, is going to, to be upright, not only for us as the landlords, and this area of Mara Triangle, and Mara and the Mara, but it's going to elevate the status of uh, uh, tourism in, in Kenya. It's a very simple man. You cannot even uh, know whether this was the CEO of the company. So since then, I've really admired his working uh, style, uh, his, uh, the way he socialized with his, the staff, give them the confidence, the way he has brought them. And uh, that really uh, made us be much closer together. I think Sam's so relieved because I've been nagging him for all of those 15 or 20 years for the site from the time we met uh, first at, at Kichwa and, and after a short time Samuel brought me up to the site I was saying but that's, that's a fantastic site, that's a fantastic site. So for me the first thing was that having built I don't know many, 60 lodges across Africa and India and being uh, consulting in Latin America on a lot of developments there, this was always for me the best lodge site I'd ever seen anywhere in the world. And if you don't invest in incredible potential sites just because there's a current issue, it's not a very good long-term strategy. So for me, there's a this, this site meant that I don't believe that there was a commercial risk. But on the upside, I think the other thing that we found in Kenya was that Kenya had the best human capital of anywhere that we worked. And I just found particularly in Kenya that working with Kenyans and, and allowing them to take a more proactive part in the business, not just, to, not just to be a housekeeper, but to be the housekeeper that ran her little business of housekeeping and to be, for example, responsible for setting her own budget and for making her own purchases and controlling her own expenses. And the response that we have always had, particularly all over Africa, but particularly from Kenyans, was that it's quite rare in this industry and, and maybe in Africa for people to be treated in a way where their opinion is valued. And it's not just a top-down approach because a top-down approach for me will never work because if you're in a top, top, top end, luxury tourism business you need your staff to be able to make decisions instantly if you don't support your staff when they make decisions good or bad then they won't make decisions and the biggest risk in this business is to have people who don't make decisions as opposed to people who only make good decisions so i think we have a very consultative uh, approach to management and i found across Africa, but, but again, particularly in Kenya, that that's a very, very fertile uh, place to invest effort in, is, is in the human capital of, of Kenya. It's the home of safari. This is the most beautiful reserve that you know, I've ever seen. There's a, there's a wildness to it, but there's also a gentleness to the Mara that you don't get in some of the other countries. So we're really, really excited and we think that we will build something here that is spectacular. And, and we look forward with, with Samuel and his family to build something really special here.